Priscilla Ann Lewis was born on March 26, 1975, and grew up in Port Costa, California. At the age of 21, she lived in Vallejo and worked as a waitress at the Four Corners Pizza and Pasta at 628 2nd Avenue in Crockett, California. She was described as bubbly, hardworking, and very friendly. On September 24, 1996, Priscilla was working her shift at the restaurant and at some point decided to take a break. After some time had passed, a restaurant cook realized that Priscilla had never returned from her break. He went to look for her and discovered Priscilla with her face in the toilet in the bathroom. She had been beaten, strangled, drowned, and her neck broken. The bathroom was used by several businesses and was located in the dark and isolated basement of the old building of Valona Square Mall and was open to anyone who entered the building. There were three entrances and three narrow and long stairwells leading to the basement. It was well known that Priscilla feared that basement and would often use the restroom across the street at a bar. It's speculated that someone grabbed her drug her down the basement stairs, and attempted to rape her. Although many people were interviewed during the initial investigation, the case would go cold and wouldn't be solved for 25 years. The DNA evidence would be tested several times during those years, but it wouldn't lead to a break until 2020. That's when the DNA matched to an inmate incarcerated in California serving a nearly 300-year sentence for other sexual assault charges. The DNA belonged to Danny Lamont Hamilton, who was charged with molesting the three teenage nieces of his then fiancée in 1999. When the woman confronted him about it, he kidnapped her at gunpoint and drove to Reno, Nevada, where he forced her to marry him at a wedding chapel. She was able to return home more than two days later and quickly went to the police to report that she had been kidnapped at gunpoint, beaten, and sexually assaulted. Weeks later, Hamilton attempted to pull a woman over using a painted emergency light impersonating a cop. But little did he know, her husband was asleep in the car, and once he saw him, Hamilton took off. He was caught later that night and arrested. Thankfully, he will never be able to hurt another woman and will likely die behind bars. Roy Lindsay Tootle was born in 1954 in England to parents Dennis and Hilary Tootle. At the age of 14, Roy lived on Willer Lane in Brockham, Surrey, England and attended Kingston Grammar School. On April 23, 1968, around 3 p.m., Roy got on the school bus with his friends to go home. As usual, the bus dropped him off at Chessington and he then decided to hitchhike the rest of the way home. He wanted to save bus fare money as he was saving up to buy a bicycle, but it wasn't unusual for him or even other children to hitchhike during that era. Roy was seen about 4 p.m. in Chessington trying to hail a car. When he didn't arrive home, his parents became frantic and filed a missing persons report around 9 p.m., but for some reason, the investigation didn't start until the very next day. During the investigation, a bus driver recalled seeing a gray Austin Westminster Mark II in the roundabout as he was making his route. The driver was described as a short, stocky man with whitish-gray hair. He noticed the driver was leaning over to speak to a schoolboy that resembled Roy. This eyewitness account resulted in 18,000 Austin Westminster owners being interviewed across the UK. Also, because they didn't have a better system to narrow down car registrations, over a million registration documents were reviewed by hand. Three days after he went missing, his lifeless body was found covered with his school blazer outside the gates of Shirkley Court in Mickleham. The nearby forester workers had been in that area hours earlier and reported that the body had not been there at the time. The pathologist, Dr. Keith Mont, said that Roy had been dead for two to three days when he was found and noted that the body must have been moved to the spot it was found later on. The same Austin Westminster seen stop talking to a boy, likely Roy, the day he went missing, was also seen near where the body was dumped. 
Roy had been raped and strangled to death, and his murder would go unsolved for the next 33 years. Since this was a time before DNA, the samples taken from Roy's body and clothing were only analyzed for blood types. In the 1970s, investigators traveled to Scotland to interview a man named Brian Lund Field from Solihull, West Midlands, who had been sentenced to two years in prison for the attempted abduction and indecent assault of a 14-year-old boy in Aberdeen. They wondered if he could be involved, but at the time, there was no proof and it was only speculation. In late 1996, 28 years after the murder, a partial DNA sample was recovered from samples taken from Roy's pants that had been kept in a freezer for all those years. Then in late 1999, a man was arrested for drunk driving and a routine DNA swap was taken and entered into the national database. His DNA sample matched the DNA from Roy's crime scene evidence. The man's name was none other than Brian Lund Field. He had also served two four-year sentences in the 1980s for two counts of unlawful sex with underage boys and falsely imprisoning two teenage boys. In February 2001, police arrested Field at his flat in Birmingham. Although he admitted to his criminal past involving sexual offenses with young boys, he denied knowing Roy or having anything to do with his death. Nevertheless, Field's DNA was once again collected while in custody. The following day, he confessed to abducting, raping, and murdering 14-year-old Roy. He said he had seen him get off a bus and thumb for a lift and picked him up. He then drove to a second rest stop and strangled Roy with a rope. The body was kept in his trunk for a few days before finally dumping it where it was ultimately found. Field was tried and found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Strangely, he pleaded guilty to murder, but not the sexual assault, although he had described the rape in details to authorities. Sadly, Roy's parents were not alive to see justice in their son's case. Field is also suspected to be responsible for the disappearance of 11-year-old Patrick Warren and 13-year-old David Spencer, who became known as the Milk Carton Boys. He is also suspected of the disappearance of Lee Boxall, who disappeared from the street in Sutton in 1988, less than four miles from where Roy was abducted from. Roy's murder was one of the most exhaustive criminal investigations that Britain had ever seen and uncovered one of the most prolific pedophiles in British history. Mary Frances Lindgren was a beloved mother and grandmother living in California. At the age of 67, Mary lived at the Covina Villa Retirement Home in Covina, California, due to a stroke she had years prior. On the morning of January 19, 1996, staff entered her room to wake her for breakfast and discovered a horrific scene. Mary had been raped and beaten to death in the middle of the night. A DNA profile was created from DNA found at the scene, but no matches were found at the time. Anyone that could have possibly accessed her room was questioned by detectives. Mary was beaten so badly that not even her son could easily recognize her. Detective Joe Purcell with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department began working on the case, but the case went cold and he retired in 2009. He was later hired back on as a cold case detective, but as soon as he began making more progress in the investigation, he was let go on July 1, 2020 due to budget cuts. But Mary's case continued to haunt him, and he couldn't let it go, so he kept working the case for free, day in and day out. Finally, they were able to link the DNA profile to the father of the killer, Adolfo Bernal, who was already deceased. His DNA had been entered into CODIS years earlier when he was serving time for a rape charge. His son, 46-year-old David Bernal, was surveilled by a team who were able to retrieve an item from Bernal's trash that contained his saliva. Once tested, it was a match, and Bernal was arrested in El Monte, California. It's believed that he entered Mary's room through a sliding glass door on the first floor of her retirement home. It's unknown if she knew Bernal, 
but the facility was near the Clearman's Northwoods Inn, where he could have been staying. Her loved ones were pleased to see an arrest in her murder and thankful for the determined cold case detective. On September 9, 1987, the body of 37-year-old Eeg Sober Adler was found in a rear parking lot of a day's inn in Herndon, Virginia. Her autopsy showed that she had been beaten to death and suffered a skull fracture and a brain hemorrhage during the attack. However, the case would go unsolved for nearly 35 years. Fast forward 34 years to October 2021, an inmate serving life in prison for the 2002 murder of his ex-girlfriend, 37-year-old Patricia Bentley, confessed to killing Eeg. During an interview with detectives, former truck driver and serial killer Charles Hellum described details about the murder that only the killer would know. He was then indicted and charged with her murder. He was also charged with the murder of 19-year-old Jennifer Landry. Jennifer's body was found on August 15, 2002, in a wooded area in Mount Rainer, Maryland, and she remained unidentified for three years. Hellum, who is serving life behind bars, sent letters to the police in 2010 and 2017. The letters claim to have information on Jennifer's murder, but on two different occasions, detectives arrived to speak with him and he refused. In fact, he was initially questioned after the murder as a person of interest, but denied any involvement at the time. It seems as if he and law enforcement were playing a game of tag back and forth. But he finally agreed when they tried to meet with him a third time at the Supermax Red Onion State Prison in Virginia. Detectives wanted to question him about his possible involvement in Jennifer's murder. Not only did he confess to her murder, but he also confessed to the murder of Eeg. Hellum has been described as a violent career criminal who, at age 13 in 1982, faced assault and battery charges. Jennifer was originally from Massachusetts, but was last seen in New York City on July 31, 2002. Her body was found two weeks later, naked, and lying in the 3600 block of Oak Lane, five miles northwest of Washington, D.C. She was found in a fetal position with stab wounds, wrapped in a red ROM cable electrical cord, and had died from asphyxiation. Her fingerprints are what ultimately led to her identification three years later. He stated that he picked her up from Washington, D.C. to solicit sex for money and then drove to the motel and killed her. The parents of both women are deceased, but officials said they hope the charges bring some closure to the victim's surviving families and friends. Authorities are now exploring whether Helm may be connected to other unsolved crimes. He committed murder once in 1987 and twice in 2002, so there are possibly more victims. Mary Ann Haig Kelly was born on August 18, 1910. On January 19, 1989, at the age of 78, she was living alone at 411 Francis Street in Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas. One of her family members became concerned when he could not get in touch with Mary. That's when he entered her home and found her body under her bed, half-naked. She had been strangled to death and stuffed under the bed. There was no sign of forced entry, but items were stolen from her home and her car was missing. Many people of interest were interviewed and fingerprints were submitted, but nothing came from this. Investigators also canvassed local pawn shops searching for her stolen valuables. Her car and purse were found a couple of days later in Dallas, but once again, no arrests were made and the case would go unsolved for the next 33 years. Then, in late 2021, Othram developed a genealogical profile of the killer using DNA recovered from her body. Finally, in June of 2022, with the use of genetic genealogy conducted by Othram, a half-brother of the killer was discovered. Shockingly, the half-brother had lived next door to Mary at the time of the murder. When the half-brother was located, Detectives recovered beer cans from his trash to test for his DNA, and it was a match. 
Then finally, on July 22, 2022, the Dallas police arrested 53-year-old David Rojas and charged him with Mary's murder. He was 20 years old at the time of the crime. Mary's only child, Jimmy Sutherland, passed away in 2015, never seeing his mother's killer brought to justice. 